New Yorkers love riding their bike shares to work. And what's not to love? It's faster than a cab, less crowded than the subway, and you breathe the fresh air. Well, not always. The problem is, in certain locations, getting a bike is almost impossible. Same here. Finally. City bike ridership has exploded from 600,000 monthly trips in 2013 to 2.1 million trips in October 2019. But as the number of daily trips grows, it has become challenging to make sure bikes are available where people need them. The main reason? Most people like to ride in very specific patterns. Unlike a subway system, right, which is on rails, people ride bikes where they want to go. This is Caroline Samponaro, a former bike activist and currently the head of micro-mobility policy at City Bike's parent company, Lyft. Our bike share trips most often start and end at public transit locations. People don't love to ride up hills, they like to ride down hills. We also see that people like to ride during daylight hours more than not. And so we're always thinking about the algorithms that support our rebalancing, making sure that we're getting bikes back to where people really want to ride them. Since May, we've had 11 ridership records broken. Much like the subway system, I think people now think of City Bike as part of their everyday experience. City Bike is deploying a complex system of artificial intelligence and machine learning to analyze the data and figure out how to rebalance the network. Um, right now we use a program called the Get Bikes Map, which essentially uses an algorithm in the background to calculate where are areas where we have very few bikes and where is it that over a trailing four to six week period, we've seen high demand. That algorithm has been trained on a very large data set over a history of time that's been a predictable indicator within our business. Artificial intelligence is pretty powerful, but still, someone has to physically move the bikes. The bike train is an electric bike that pulls a train of other bikes, and usually that's about 12 to 16 additional bikes that are kind of stacked on a rack that gets pulled behind this electric bike. And it's also incredibly sustainable. Even for the small amount of electricity that's used by the one electric bike, you know, that's leading the bike train, we offset with carbon credits to make sure that that's a fully sustainable solution. City Bike uses a variety of rebalancing methods, such as dedicated employees called valets who move bikes to popular hubs, vans that transfer bikes between full and empty stations, and a program called Bike Angels, which rewards riders with points for riding from full docks to empty ones. The company says it's now rebalancing half the bikes in its fleet at least once every single day. And yet, empty docks remain a problem in certain parts of the city. There's a concept in transportation called induced demand, which is essentially that, you know, the better we get at rebalancing, the higher the demand or customers who want to use that product. So we're constantly getting better, but the problem is constantly changing because it means that we induce more demand of the product the more and more that we have it available. It's a culture shift. And we spent a century building our lives in the United States around the automobile, and it's going to take some years to undo that, but I think we're seeing it happen in record time, and bike share systems are driving that change.